Hello everyone and good morning and welcome to another video podcast of Political News Time. I am your hostess, Alex Mayers. I was on just a few hours ago testing my equipment. As so many of you can see, I have created a new little uh, news booth for me to commentate at at you from you know it's that that's my new little vibe that I have going on here but anyways um let me try to act normal now hope everyone's having a really good morning and um this morning we're going to talk about a political issue pertaining to the state of California and pertaining to an arena within the entertainment industry known as the adult entertainment industry um just last week, I believe it was, or maybe um, two weeks ago, there was a California Labor Board hearing in regards to a um, adult entertainment agent, in other words, an agent for porn stars known as Derek Hay and his uh, agency known as LA Direct Models. And... What's interesting is that I've noticed within the adult entertainment industry blogosphere, which is something that I used to put a lot of, a lot more of my time and energy and focus into, but no longer do. But I, I felt like, you know, gosh, for so many years, people have had so much to say about LA direct models and Derek Hay. And now he's finally being taken to task, um, in front of the California Labor Board, which is a um, federal agency, basically. And um, no one in the uh, blogosphere is really talking about it much. And I was thinking to myself, why would that be? And then it occurred to me, well, it's because um, this particular agent and his associates essentially control all of the adult entertainment industry commentary blogs and media. (laughs) <laughs> so I thought to myself, you know what? I need to talk about this because over the year, over the years, there has been so um, much hearsay, so much rumor, so much fact, so many claims, so many allegations in regards to LA Direct Models, Derek Hay, and an entity known as the Luxury Companion. I have covered a lot of this myself as an independent investigative blogger and journalist. Um, I have interviews in regards to some of the issues that this California Labor Board hearing touches upon. And um, I just want people to know my thoughts on this because when it comes to politics, the adult entertainment industry or the porn industry has been very influential over the years. And that's something that nobody wants to talk about. Um, It kind of came to light through this past, um, through the past uh, presidential term with Trump, which thankfully is almost over, but we saw, or we all got to know Stormy Daniels, the porn star, and we all got to hear about her interactions or alleged interactions with uh, our current president, right? We also heard from a uh, porn star known as Jessica Drake and some allegations in regards to our current president. We heard about um, some alleged payments made to these ladies, payments which echo sounds of um, escorting. (laughs) You you know, there's just been a lot that's going on, so, you know... It's always important to keep up with the um, politics and the legalities when it comes to the adult entertainment industry because in some strange way, shape, or form, somehow it always tends to touch at least the fringes, if not the pinnacle of politics. (laughs) So uh, anyway, what's been going on with uh, LA Direct Models and... um, an apparently linked entity known as the Luxury Companion over the years, is that it has seemed, at least, that um, LA Direct Models and the Luxury Companions are somehow um, facilitating meetings between the general public, 
or the private sect of society and um, porn stars. So um, it seems that it's been very difficult for some of these girls to get out of the contracts that they signed in order to be an LA Direct model. So I'm just going to read to you this really um, comprehensive write-up in regards to the situation. It's titled, Here's What Here's what Happened This Week at the Derrick Hay Labor Board Hearings. And this is an article that was initially posted on XBiz. It appears to have been written by a guy known as Gustavo Turner. All right. This was written September 27th, 2019. And good morning, everybody, for all of you who are just now getting in here. The first part of the Labor Board hearings concerning a petition against talent agent Derek Hay and his business, LA Direct, on behalf of five of his former clients, wrapped up this morning in downtown Los Angeles. The hearings will resume the week of November 4th through the 8th. The case is also known within the industry as the Jane Doe's case. After the initial filing, which did not identify the five performers by either their legal or stage names. And um, as I read this, I am going to share some of my commentary in regards to this. Um, it's interesting that these hearings occurred at around the same time as this other um, case involving um, a studio called Girls Do Porn. And um, what's interesting about this LA Direct situation and um, the Girls Do Porn situation is that both situations have an overlap when it comes to that porn wiki hate site. Good morning, Zane. How are you doing? I'm just talking about the uh, write-up in regards to the uh, California Labor Board hearings having to do with Derek Hay, LA Direct Models, and um, quite a few porn stars. All right. <clears throat> the original petition. The original petition was filed before the State Labor Commissioner of the State of California in June of 2018 by industry attorney Alan Gelbard. Alan Gelbard. So really what we're looking at here, when, when we're talking about the lawyers involved at least, is we have Gelbard versus Derek Hay and the Luxury Companion. The question I have is, why would it be that Gelbard has such an issue with Derek Hay and the Luxury Companion? Who exactly is Gelbard really representing? Or is he secretly representing the best interests of LA Direct Models and uh, the Luxury Companion by... Um, basically being um, controlled opposition. Is it possible? Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Conspiracy. All right. The petition named two respondents. Derek Hay as an individual and Direct Models, Inc. doing business as LA Direct Models, a California corporation. Gelbard, on behalf of his clients, petitioned the Labor Board to determine controversy between Hay, his agency, and the performers and requested monetary damages, declaratory relief, and the re revocation of Hay's license. Hmm. So they really want to get his license pulled. I wonder if they're going to succeed in doing that. Because without that license, I guess he could go overseas and still be an agent or something. But um, he'd be up the creek without that license. I think a lot of the other um, talent agents would want him to lose his license because that would be less competition for them. That's for sure. Hmm. I bet all the talent agencies are secretly giving Gelbart money to get rid of pay. <laughs> all right, and it continues. Through LA Direct, Gelbart wrote... 
pay promises potential adult performers fame and fortune. Once they enter into exclusive multi-year agency agreements, he fails to account for all fees earned as related to their employment and uses his power to coerce them into improper business arrangements and improper unwanted and in some cases unlawful sexual relations with himself and others. Unless they comply with his wishes, he intentionally destroys their careers by refusing to book them for work, even when, speci when specifically requested. Mm. Well, over the years, I have heard those claims from multiple people. Multiple people. I have that one interview with that girl, Tiffany Fox. She relayed claims similar to this. In regards to Derek Hay and the Luxury Companion and whatnot, um, I heard it from um, about three other performers too. When I think about it, absolutely. But then here's the question: Why punish Hay for doing what all of his peers are doing too? Because they're all six sons of bitches who control that industry. They really are. And um, anyone who says anything that is not what they're told to say ends up blacklisted or um, harassed out of the industry or, uh, you, you know, just something. You're Trinidad. Hi, Trinidad. How are you doing? You, you know, but no matter what, unless you decide to just no longer exercise your free will of any sort, as long as you um, decide to just lay down and keep your mouth shut, you're going to be treated like crap and um, you're not going to be offered the same jobs as your peers who play the game. So, um, yeah. It, you know, when I was looking at this piece and I was looking at um, who all is making claims, I was really surprised that one of the people um, making the claims is a woman known as Shay Evans. I also noticed on Twitter that there's a adult star known as Bobby Dillon who has named the luxury companion as being um, one of the main problems when it comes to the bully bloggers, the bloggers that the uh, current talent have to contend with consistently, who basically hold their reputations ransom. Oh, do I want to read through all this? I, there, there was like a key part because it's such a long write up. But this guy, Gustavo, he did, he did a very thorough job. A very thorough job. Alright, I'll read a bit more. Okay, allegations against Derek Hay and LA Direct. The allegations against Hay specifically or specified in the petition include unlawfully locking performers through multi-page contracts, only a single page of which he submits for approval by the Labor Commission. <laughs> How is it that no one's noticed that he's been doing all this crap for such a long time, huh? Why now? Why, why is he in trouble all of a sudden right now? Hmm? Contracts involving additional and unconscionable fees and penalties, which he then coerces performers to either pay in cash or work off by performing sexual acts on him. <laughs> yep, he's a dirty old white man. But we've all known this for years when it comes to Derek Hay. Why now? Why now is this suddenly such a big problem? Is it because there has to be a sacrifice made? considering all the mischief the adult industry has created within the world of politics. And yes, I am referring to the Stormy Daniels, Donald Trump thing. Do, do, is, is it that a sacrifice is now demanded from the political world, from the 
porn industry in order to keep going? Considering all that trouble? I bet so. But yeah, okay, so there's so basically that last point had to do with Derek Kay creating a system of debt bondage. Yeah, well, what else is new? That's what the porn industry is. It's a giant slave system that has been legalized. It is debt bondage. And they do not want you to leave until they want you to leave. And they will try to stalk you and chase you and just do not deal with these people. They're organized crime. They're criminals. All right. So anyway, that's one of the things that was put in this complaint. Charging agency fees to producers in excess of the performer's rates. Breaching fiduciary duty. Failing to pay performers their contractually obligated share of their fees, which are directly related to their employment. Coercing some of his performers into escorting and then should they seek to terminate their illegal contracts, threatens to out them for performing illegal sex work. That last point very important, very important, because I don't think it should only be Derek Hay sitting up on the stand. Why don't they bring up um, that guy known as Dave of TLC? Put him up on that stand, because really, I want to see some video footage of that cat. I've heard of him over the years, have had a few communications with him over the years, never seen him though. Why is he hiding? Come out, come out, wherever you are, TLC Dave. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Because everyone knows, or anyone who reads through this damn thing, especially when it comes to the outing of the performers, no one likes to blog like that dude. He's the, he's the one who's controlling that Mike South. Yep. Again, people like that stalker Kelly and uh, Whitey Crew to run that shit. Mm. But the girls, they're on to it. They're on to it. I mean, really, um, if you're a performer who really wants to play the game and win that game, and you're politically minded when it comes to your career <laughs> whatnot, um, steer clear of LA Direct Models, steer clear of the Luxury Companion, Steer clear of any of those porn star escort rings like uh, porn star companions, my platinum provider. What else do they have? Uh, the Hetera agency. There's, there's so many of them, but just don't do that. Don't, don't fall into those people because they're really bad people and um, they're crazy, they're mentally off balance, they, they never get help, that's why they end up in jail in time. But, um, yeah. I mean, this girl Charlotte Cross, she's one of the people who's made some um, allegations and whatnot. The things that are mentioned are things that I have covered and heard of over the years. So I don't think that these girls are lying. I don't think that they're just, you know, making up these claims. All right. Let's see what would be interesting to read from here. Who are the Jane Doe's? Originally, the petitioning performers went by Jane Doe's 1 through 5, but a stipulation agreement between both parties' attorneys before the hearing allowed for their stage names to be revealed. Their legal names and other identifying information revealed during the hearings are kept confidential for their safety and are to be redacted from all pieces of submitted evidence. The Jane Doe's are Charlotte Cross, heard of her, Sophie Ryan, heard of her, Andy Rye, not sure who that is, Hadley Viscara, no, Shay Evans, yeah. And Ryan Shay Evans stated they have stopped using those stage names because of their association with their years of Derek Hay and LA Direct. Shay Evans continues to perform as Gia Milano. Rye through Gelbard requested that only her former name be used in association with this matter. 
Yeah. Well, Charlotte Cross has been around for a while. Shay Evans, she was like, she was the hot thing for a while there. I actually think that that TLC Dave guy was kind of obsessed with her. Um, I do remember when people started bullying her and picking on her a little bit. Um, I remember, it, I think it was that nasty Kelly Roberts, one of the adult industry bloggers who was saying something about her not um, acknowledging her black heritage or something. And it was kind of like, who cares? You, you know, what's, <laughs> what's this about? But now just knowing that that particular woman, Kelly, um, works really directly for direct models and TLC Dave, they probably sent her to bully this girl, Shay, because Shay wasn't willing to play, um, house with them. That's what it sounds like. All right. On Monday and Tuesday, the hearing officer heard testimonies from Sophie Ryan, her husband, her husband, performer, Justin Hunt and Charlotte Cross. Wednesday started with Freeman continuing his cross-examination of Charlotte Cross. Freeman tried to make Cross seem unreliable about her account of unfair cancellations and kill fees, chipping away at the performer's credibility. But then Cross became visibly upset when Freeman tried to characterize European producer-performer Pierre Woodman as an award-winning prestigious member of the adult entertainment industry. <laughs> understand why she got upset what when I think of the name Pierre Woodman <laughs> only one person comes to my mind you want to know who it is Serenity Hayes or Farrah Valentine we all saw, at least anyone who was a part of the adult entertainment industry blogosphere, we all saw the situation that Pierre Woodman himself posted in regards to his interaction on set with Serenity Hayes. That didn't look professional to me. I saw nothing but red flag after red flag after red flag when um, I viewed that footage. So, just the fact, and, and you know, Serenity Hayes, she was stalked and harassed and bullied and everything after her dealing with Pierre Woodman, a, a situation that never should have happened and that was completely unethical and appeared very unprofessional and almost like just cringeworthy. Um, just seeing that Pierre Woodman is named in this mess, that speaks so so that speaks volumes, but I could see why that would make Charlotte Cross upset. <laughs> Pierre Woodman was a recurring name in the performer's testimonies, particularly one shooting trip he made to the U.S. in the summer of 2017. Woodman is a controversial figure among performers specializing in gonzo porn, often with a pro-amateur audition casting theme. The petitioners characterized Woodman as a very close friend of Hayes and alleged that they were not treated professionally on the shoots that Hay had arranged with the French producer and that they were afraid to bring it up to their agent because of the men's close friendship. Wow. Now, see, that wasn't something that I knew before this article by Gustavo Turner came out. I did not know that Hay and... Pierre Woodman had a close relationship or friendship because that actually, when I think about it, ties back to the Serenity Hayes situation. Sure as hell does. And, you know, it just seems like everyone that Derek Hay is associated with is kind of bad news. All these Euro people, they all seem to... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I sound like a, I sound very prejudiced against the Euro people. I shouldn't say that, but it's true. Why is it that all these Europeans are such troublemakers in the Los Angeles adult entertainment industry? And why, why does the Los Angeles adult entertainment industry continue to condone it when it just messes everything up for everybody else? Is it because they're white and white is right in that world? Is that what it is? Sure looks like it to me because when I look at how many good things so many individuals of color have done to progress the legitimacy of the adult entertainment industry, when I look at all, all of that opposed to just how a, a lot of the um, foreigners from Europe have just taken advantage of the American talent pool and kind of corrupted it. It, it just it, it's such a blatant colorism that it's sick. It, it's really sick. You know, um, it's funny because somebody posted a, uh, one of the adult bloggers posted an article when it came to, um, a recent seminar addressing racism that was conducted by the adult performers advocacy committee, APAC over the past, I guess, week or so. And one of the bloggers was like, Oh, they had a separate meeting for the people of color versus the white people in the industry. You know what? Um, the industry has been segregated for such a long amount of time. Why not just go ahead and bring it out in the open? Because I'll tell you this, I think a lot of people of color within the adult entertainment industry would love to be completely segregated by those who are not of color in the adult entertainment industry because those who are not of color in the adult entertainment industry seem to be the ones who are trying to um, cross too many boundaries that are going to get that entire industry shut down as a whole. Um sooner rather than later all because certain people can't play by the rules you know if you're going to be a pimp if, if you're going to be somebody who um wants to book prostitutes or escorts you need to get your shit together open a brothel in the legal areas that you can do so in nevada and let that be it make it an appealing place that sex workers will want to go to in order to work and that consumers will want to frequent who are into that sort of thing don't be trying to um break the law and be an illegal pimp because prostitution or escorting or whatever you want to call it um really isn't just not legal in america it's just not and there's reasons why. And I think that American law needs to be respected in that regard. So um, anyway, was there any other part of this that I wanted to read through? So anyway, um, Charlotte Cross, she's not happy with Pierre Woodman. That had to do with this. Oh, but there is a whole section in this article. And again, it's titled... Um, Here's what happened this week at the Derrick Hay Labor Board hearings. There's a whole section titled The Luxury Companion. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to read it because I think it's funny. By far, the messiest part of the hearings and whole case concerns Hay's precise relationship with two individuals, a man and a woman who own a business called The Luxury Companion. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> they didn't name the man or, or, or the woman. I wonder if they're talking about a woman named Karen and a guy named Dave, or who at least goes by Dave. Could be someone who goes by the name Dwight? I don't know. <laughs> Hay owns Direct Models and is, and is in charge of the Lee Network, a successful feature dance book booking operation that arranges club engagements for many performers in the adult industry, including talent signed with other agencies. The Lee Network has a special relationship with the Sapphire chain of strip clubs, which is considered by dancers one of the most lucrative gigs in the gentlemen's club circuit. <clears throat> I wonder why. 
Why are the Sapphire clubs so lucrative? Why? Do they have extras in the champagne room? What's going on with this Sapphire club? I have noticed that certain girls on a certain circuit seem to always be appearing at the Sapphire Club. If there's anyone out there who wants to do some investigative journalism, who frequents strip clubs, send me an email. I might have an assignment for you. <laughs> the petitioners, however, have alleged a less straightforward relationship between Hay and the Luxury Companion. This company, often referred to as TLC, is a legal entity in the state of California described in incorporation and trademark papers as providing escort services, also defined as personal and social services rendered by others to meet the needs of individuals, security services for the protection of property and individuals. Security services. Are these girls like um, Bond girls? Is that what the companions really are? Are, are, they, are they given? Are, are these secret agents? Or are, are these security guards? Is that what they? What's, what's going on? Sure. All right. Escorting, selling companionship for an agreed upon period of time is a legal activity in the state of California. Helping people book escorting engagements is also legal, as long as the escorting is not facilitating other illegal activities, particularly prostitution. <laughs> oh, y'all have to go and read this. I have it linked up on um, my Twitter, but uh, I'll also repost this link in the description for, um, you know, when I get this video up on YouTube, because this is wild. Um, I want to, I want to read Shay Evans testimony cause I thought it was weird, but very telling. I think that they're trying to make Shay into like an ultimate sex slave. That's what I think was happening with her, but she woke up just in time. Shay Evans began her testimony Wednesday. Like Sophie Ryan, who testified Monday, she admitted to having had consensual sex with Derek Hay. But unlike Ryan, who Gelbard said had a sexual relationship with Derek for a short period of time early on in her career, right after she started working with LA Direct. Evans told of rebuffing the agent's advances on several occasions until one time after a party during an out of town convention, they had a single sexual encounter. So he'd been after her for a bit. He was after Shay Evans. He wanted what he couldn't have. Then he finally had her and then everything went to hell. That's not what it says, but you'll hear it. Here we go. Shay Evans testimony was the least precise in terms of a timeline. The beginnings of her professional relationship with Hay overlap with a very short marriage and subsequent divorce to a man who she claims submitted her application to both LA Direct and TLC on her behalf. Ooh! So it sounds kind of like whoever it is that she's in a relationship with felt like it was okay to procure his wife out, like pimp her? I wonder who she was married to. I wonder, because let me tell y'all something, women especially, listen, listen good and well, a man who loves you will never try to sell you, okay? If a guy's trying to sell you, he doesn't love you. Don't marry a guy who tries to sell you. Yep, yep, pimping her out. Oh, for the first few months of her adult industry career, Evans was entangled with this person in what she described as a very abusive relationship. After escaping this relationship, she said, she moved back with her parents, 
who kicked her out after her ex outed her as a sex worker. Homeless and destitute, Evans said she called Hay. Ugh. So first her, the guy who she thought she loved, tried to pimp her out. Then she tries to go home and the guy who couldn't make money off her anymore um, basically went all porn wiki hate site on her and probably made the, the reality of what she dealt with far seem far worse than it actually was to her parents and you know separated her from any kind of support system. Ugh, and then she ends up with Derek Hay. I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me to learn that Derek Hay and whoever this husband was of hers were actually working together to destroy her life. Because predators will help each other at times. So anyway, um, she contacts Derek Hay. Quote, I was living in my car, end quote, Evans testified. Quote, I called Derek hysterical and he said his friends would help me out, end quote. Evans specified these friends were the couple who owned the Luxury Companion. Quote, how would they help you out? Asked Gelbard. Shay Evans replies, quote, escorting. Gelbard continues, can you be more specific? Shay replies, prostitution. Gelbard had almost identical exchanges with other performers. The male co-owner of TLC and Hay, according to Evans' testimony, were like bros. They knew each other for so long they had a game of who could get more girls to sleep with them, with the LA Direct models. The same pictures Evans had taken for LA Direct and was charged for, she testified were on the TLC website without, LA, without the LA Direct logo. Evans testified that the TLC owners attempted to book her through Hay for private sex work. She explained that she was always at their house at this point and spoke with them a lot. Evans testified that the TLC owners attempted to book her through Hay for private sex work. The line between different kinds of sex work became blurred for Evans. She spoke of being booked by LA Direct sending her to a hotel room with a single guy, supposedly to make a porn scene multiple times. Gelbart brought up two private events in November 2017 that were described as a poker party in Orange County and a karaoke party in downtown Los Angeles. Both events were characterized as upscale social events with porn performers, some of them topless, being hired for ambiance. Even, even though these events did not involve shoots, according to Evans, the performers could not opt out of them without being charged a kill fee to their LA Direct accounts. Evans was charged the kill fee for skipping the OC part poker party, but was a part of the group of the LA Direct models who entertained guests for the same promoter at the DTLA karaoke party two weeks later. The OC poker party was central to the 2018 case successfully brought against LA Direct by performer Bunny Colby, who had been a Hay client under the name Nadia Nabokova. Colby attended some of this week's hearings to express her support for the five Jane Doe's petitioners. Gelbard introduced elements from the Colby case onto the record, which Freeman objected to as irrelevant, as Evans did not go to that party. No, it's relevant. It's relevant. It's relevant. Because, um, basically, I mean, this is solid slavery from my perspective. Hey, it's like, okay, if you don't come to this party, I'm going to charge your account for a kill fee because you don't want to come to a party where you're basically going to be molested and exploited and um, objectified. Really? Wow. Wow. 
Evans described the event she did attend as a karaoke party hosted by the same people, where she was paid $300 to be thrown in a room with a bunch of drunk guys, with no security provided by LA Direct models. I wonder if they raped her at that party. Sounds like a gangbang. Mm. Unlike other models, when signing with the agency, Evans had explicitly chosen not to make herself available for bachelor parties. I don't blame her. Quote, it was a prison. As for Hay's sexual advances, Evans testified that Hay asked her for a hand job on the way to a dancing gig he had secured for her. Why are, what is it, is it with these dirty old men um, constantly targeting young girls? What, what is it, why would a male want to, want to force himself on a young girl? I mean, where is your pleasure in that? You know she doesn't want to touch you. You know she doesn't want anything to do with you. Like, she's only hanging out with you because she needs some money. And for whatever reason, she doesn't have high enough self-esteem to where she thinks she can use her mind instead of her body to get herself, you know, through life. It happens. Been there, done that. But um, these men who are like just predatory against these women. Oh, so gross. I, 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 they just need to get beat up. Ugh. When she returned from the club to his house where she was staying, hey, hey, she said, tried to open the door, but I had locked it. And then he yelled at her for doing so. So she's staying at his place while she's doing some sort of an entertainment gig, right? And the room that she's staying in, he thought he could just freely enter. I guess he thought, oh, she's staying at my house. Free sex for me. You know, it, it, was that supposed to be what it was? But she locked that door. That's right. Then in November of 2016, Evans and the luxury companion owners had traveled to the East Coast during Exotica, New Jersey. They all met with Hay at one of the New York Sapphire Clubs to support other direct models clients that were booked there. According to Evans, during the evening, as the drinks flowed, it was decided that a trip to Hawaii should be planned. Evans claimed that Hay then asked her if she wanted to come back to his hotel room. She agreed. During the ride to the hotel, she said, Hay told her she, quote, would get a lot more work and he would make her a star, end quote. So at this point, it seems like she is kind of playing ball with him a little bit. They're planning a trip to Hawaii with the TLC people. I'm thinking that TLC couple liked her too. Whole thing's weird. So anyway, um, she claimed that the trip to Hawaii did end up happening in April of 2017 and that Hay tried to force her to stay in his room. Did he initially say that he was going to get her her own room? I can't imagine him doing that. So I don't know why they would have that detail in there. I mean, he, she already knows he's a sick pervert, dirtbag, douchebag, porn agent. He's going to have her come to Hawaii and she's going to be shocked that she, he wants her to stay in his room. <laughs> Shay. <laughs> okay. Um, according to Evans, that was the only time she had sex with her agent. Hay tried to force her to stay in his room. When she declined, Evans stated, my work dramatically stopped. The performer claims Hay also deliberately booked jobs she really didn't want to do, singling out a double anal with Pierre Woodman. <laughs> See, it's a, it's a, 
the, I look, I don't even, I think that, first off, I think that Pierre Woodman, Derek Hay, um, the Luxury Companion people, that Sandra O.C. Malling, Mark Spiegler, all of them, I think they're all reptilians. Greg Lansky, um, Brad Armstrong, all those contract girls. I think that that whole porn industry in actuality is a reptilian, David Icke style cult. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. And um, they just pass girls around and then they just chew them up, spit them out. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> so anyway, um, she decided that she just couldn't stomach Derek Hay. She couldn't sleep with him anymore. So her work dries up. And then the only work that he decides to give her so that she can pay her rent probably is a gig with nasty Serenity Hayes, Pierre Woodman, who is just like the quintessential um, dirty old man, pervert looking, gross, nasty child molester looking guy. Okay, it's just disgusting. Um, so that probably traumatized the hell out of her. Um, but this is what she says. Quote, I didn't think I was personally ready, end quote, Evans testified, quote, I called him hysterical, crying, end quote, but was told she would not be able to cancel it. So she calls Derek and is like, no, I can't do this double anal with Pierre Woodman. And he's like, bitch, I don't care what you say or how much you cry. Do it! You can't cancel it. There is no out. Welcome to hell, Shay Evans. She's like, ah! <laughs> what was it like working with Derek Hay? Galbard asked at the end of the Wednesday's testimony. Quote, It was a prison, Evans replied. Quote, I couldn't do anything. I had no life. It was the hardest two years of my life. I should have been able to leave, end quote. So in other words, she felt like she couldn't leave. She had to do a damn double penetration with nasty Pierre Woodman. Forced to go to Hawaii, didn't get her own room. Had to sleep with Derek Hay. Mm. But, you know, it's good that it is coming all out right now on legal record. And is going to, um, you know, go into the courts and whatnot. Because... Um, a lot of these agents and a lot of these, uh, porn star escort ringleaders have a quote unquote little black book of some very important people. And oftentimes I think that, um, the fact that certain politicians are in certain pimps or agents, little black book is why certain pieces of legislation sometimes get past that don't seem to make sense to anybody so uh yeah but anyway I thought that was an interesting I didn't read the whole thing obviously but I thought that was a really interesting article by Gustavo Turner in regards to those California label labor board hearings um thought that was really interesting it'll be interesting to see what happens to LA direct models if anything I mean They've been operating and pulling all kinds of shit for a very long time. A very long time. So the question is, why would anything change now? I don't know. I guess because it's, you know, we're, we're encroaching upon an election year. And, uh, you know. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching another video podcast of Political News Time. And remember, you can always check out the archives of this show on www.politicalnewstime.com. Bye-bye.